Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today you can see it's a different kind of vibe. I'm sitting down, I'm not actually behind the chair doing hair, I'm on the chair. And I'm gonna bring you guys a detailed video that I get highly requested all the time. I've been promising to do a lot more in-depth sit down videos and stuff like that. So without further ado, today's video is going to teach you the difference, the real breakdown between semi, demi, and permanent hair color. If you wanna learn the difference in between these three, you're at the right place, get your notepad, get your pen and get ready to take some notes but before we begin make sure to share subscribe to all your friends anybody who might be interested in my content and let's join the community and get it growing all right let's get into it okay so I'm gonna start out with the one that's the least permanent and the one that is barely a laster and that's gonna be semi permanent there's a lot of people who think semi is demi and demi is semi and all over the place semi permanent hair color is basically scientifically the hair color where the molecules are so big they cannot penetrate penetrate the cuticle and these are what we know as of stains. These are your fashion colors, your red, your blue, your green, guy tank, stuff like that. These just simply stain the hair. That's why some people back in the day would use Kool-Aid and things like that and it would work because it's just staining the hair. That's all it's doing and if you notice it never lifts or anything like that and it doesn't show up unless the hair was pre-lightened because the canvas needs to be light enough to actually let it show. So if you have dark hair you always notice you'll never get any showing except for like that almost like black blue outside when the sun hits it that's all it will do it will show more the lighter the hair is and these are off the table when it comes to blonde specialists and the things that I do with real hair color because I never really use these this is just for fun once in a while and even then when it comes to somebody wanting like one of my clients to do like a fun pink or something like that which is rare but when they do I still reach for my demi permanent now if you've been following me for a while you know demi permanent is in my arsenal constantly I have cold well colorants I have wreck and Shades EQ. I sometimes dabble in Joyco Lumishine. Demi Permanent is by far, hands down, the best hair color out on the market and it is the best and healthiest that you can use on your hair that will make sure you have a beautiful color but not cause any damage. So a Demi Permanent hair color is basically a little stronger than a Semi. Um, the molecules are a little bit smaller and some of them can actually enter briefly into the cuticle but mostly a stain but a stronger stain. So think of this as a color without a lift. It is acidic. It is healthy on the hair. That's why I will only tone with a demi permanent. When my blondes want to go darker, especially this time of year, I always reach for the demi permanent. A lot of people get it confused in their head that demi permanent and permanent color are different because demi and semi don't last. They fade away and permanent stays forever. But the truth of the matter is demi permanent and permanent and semi all stay. They just stay a different amount of time, but all color fades. Read my lips. All color fades. All color fades. So if you're a client thinking oh let me do permanent because I want it to last it's not going to all color will fade the thing about permanent I don't like we'll get into a minute but demi permanent does not lift your demi permanent is just going to deposit only a beautiful tone and it's acidic our demi permanent is acidic which is healthy like a conditioner or anything along the lines of that so it closes the cuticle think of the cuticle as shingles on a roof after a thunderstorm you know some blow off some blow up some are stayed down some are closer to closing that's your hair when you use anything alkaline it opens up it allows the bleach or the permanent color to go in demi permanent it literally just helps close all those shingles on the roof and keep them nice and tight as possible because once we use demi or alkaline products like bleach or permanent color perms or relaxers our cuticle opens up and our goal is to try to keep it closed as much as possible I tell a lot of my clients use cold water make sure they're using treatments and conditioning masks and doing all the right things even when they blow dry I tell my clients when I blow dry and I'm giving a blowout to them I always seal the hair with a cool cool cold button at the end because we want to keep the cuticle as closed as possible demi permanent is your go-to with this that's why it adds so much shine it adds so much gloss and smoothness it's because it's keeping that cuticle as closed as possible which reflects light which makes the hair shiny glossy and really smooth to the touch demi permanents are like the Goldwell colorant the Reckon Shades EQ a lot of people say Reckon is more semi it is a little bit more translucent, but at the end of the day, it's still a uh, demi permanent. And Shades has two different versions the gloss, which is the liquid that I always use, and they also have a cream that is not as popular, but that's still a demi permanent. It just requires 10 volume, whereas the processing solution that goes with the Shades EQ gloss is like a 5 6 volume. Goldwell Colorants, they also have their demi, and then they have their more opaque, more lasting demi permanent version. They
They have three different. If you look at the bottle, they're always blue, but then they have a green, a blue, and a pink label. Green is just the toners that have no level. They're just tone. The pink is basically double ends, so they have double ends that are not permanent. They don't go into the hair. It doesn't go into the cuticle, so it does almost help deposit more pigment. That's why there's double ends, but it's still considered a demi-permanent, and they have their specific lotion with it. It's the same thing as the Shades EQ Cream, and for example, Joy Columa Shine also is very opaque like Goldwell in general, but they do allow you to use the 10 volume if you want more sticking power. You know, you guys see me do a lot of Shades EQ um, over the years when I'm doing, you know, foil conversions, low lights, doing any, you know, paint between, and if you notice, I always go for a 10 volume, and that is because it's the same idea essentially, just like the cream with the 10 volume. It's just giving it more sticking power and allowing it to hold on a little bit longer and a little bit better and more opaque. And then they have the regular Goldwell Colorants, back to that, which is the Colorants lotion with the blue, and that is my go-to. I like using Goldwell Colorants when it comes to root smudges because it's more opaque. It actually shows up better. It's really good when you want a good rooted look, and I love it for low lighting, and I also love it for my bright whites. Goldwell, I find you can leave it on a little longer, and you can do one-to-one. -one. It's supposed to be one-to-two, but I do one-to-one, -one and you can leave it on a little longer, especially with the level 10s, and they never overtone. Yeah, it will get a little bit more ashier, but like Shades EQ where it gets really dark and you gotta watch it and like it rinse in two or three minutes. Oh well, Colorants, I can leave it on a little bit longer and not worry as much and it stays really bright, keeps it really bright and those are my go-tos for that. Permanent color, this is a no-no. You guys know I hate permanent color. The only time I say it's okay to use a permanent color is if the client is at least 50 to 100% gray and they request it. If somebody wants low lights or if somebody wants an all-over color done, I never reach for the permanent unless they request it and I make sure they go over everything with me and know the difference of what the real difference is scientifically between the demi and the permanent because let me tell you right now you guys know what I'm talking about when you see the people who go for box dye or they go and even use professional color and get their hair professionally done and they do their roots you always see the harsh line permanent color lifts okay it's alkaline so in that tube of color is where the lift is the developer is the gas but it's not the lift it just helps open the cuticle and allow the color to go in deposit so basically you can do up to four levels of lift um, and that's why a lot of people see box dyes with these bright blondes but then when they do it they notice it turns their hair orange it will always do that because it's permanent color and it can only lift so far but you got to remember that permanent color only lifts and deposits it's not like a pac-man I like to think of bleach like pac-man he goes in and he eats everything up that's not the same with permanent color it goes in it lifts a little bit and it deposits on top of the underlying pigment we know everybody lifts red we know everybody lifts orange we know everybody lifts gold it all depends on where you are on the level how light your hair is naturally the darker your hair is the more red you're gonna pull and get up to those other levels the lighter you are you'll just lift really gold or a little orangey but um, you lift a lot easier but when you use use a permanent color and you're trying to lift, you're never going to get the actual real level that you think you're trying to. For example, if I had my virgin hair before I went blonde a couple weeks ago and I did, let's say, because I have like 40% white and I did 7NN, my natural level is around a 4, 5-ish, but let's just say I'm a straight 4. So I'm a 4, I need a level 7. So I'm going to use 30 volume because we know 30 volume is going to give me three levels of a lift. So when I'm done, that 30 volume will lift with that color and deposit but a couple of things are going to add into my final product all my underlying pigment I do have some red in there I do have some orange so I'm gonna have a lot of warmth and even if I use 7NA or 7NN with 7NA or anything just straight ash it's still not gonna be an ash cool tone because it's going to be busy trying to deposit and cancel out all that underlying pigment and it's going to look like a really really warm level 5 or six if I'm lucky. That's how hair works. That's how permanent color works. And that's why I am not a fan of it. Another reason I am not a fan of permanent color is because it is so hard, you guys, to get out of the hair. If you're a hairdresser or, you know, one of my clients that had a color correction with me, then you know how hard it is. Um, one that comes to mind is my client, Desiree. She has extensions now. We did the curling video with her. And a couple months ago, I did the TZ Light going black box dye to a lighter color. We did literally about eight sessions with her and she cannot get past a level six seven so we got extensions a couple lighter pieces a little bit of dark and we literally um basically did piggybacking just to get her color to look a lot
lot lighter than it was because truth is if you overlap black box dye or any box dye or any permanent color long enough you're not going to be able to get a lot of the lift you're going to stay down at those lower levels and if you are able to get up there in the higher levels kudos to you but most people will never get to the true pale instead of a banana pigment anymore i see a lot of people who had black box dye or anything like that including my client my adorable grace she's younger she had the black box dye i'll link these videos of her and desiree on the card so you guys can go check them out she had black box dye she did it twice and it took us nine sessions to get her to her white blonde gold but even when she lifts on that old hair that was once stained by the permanent color you'll always see like a peachy yellow it never really gets to the inside of a banana pale yellow so permanent is not worth the headache the only time i will do it like i said is if the client really requests it or it's okay to do when you're doing a gray coverage if the client and you have decided to stay at their natural level never go a level higher if anything go one level lower or their level and you're okay but if you do any level above their natural or up it's going to look the Disgusting. It's going to pull a lot of warmth. And unless you're going in and, you know, doing highlights with a paint between and then do a root shadow later with some ash, it's going to look really, really warm and you don't want that. For example, my copper client, you guys know my client Kim. She's been in a video before and you guys see her all the time on my Instagram behind my stories when she's getting her hair done. She has that beautiful long hair down past her butt and it's copper. We do a highlight once a year and we just do her root color every two to three months and then we'll do a toner every two sessions. So her copper stays beautifully and we use shades eq so when people think demi permanent doesn't last it does all color is going to fade but demi permanent fades out more beautiful you don't have a harsh line you don't see any like um remnants of it at all it just blends in seamlessly as it scatters away and we do um reckon shades eq on her and we're able to overlap it with toning it every couple sessions and it doesn't get darker or it doesn't become harder to kick through and when i go to lighten her later on every year for the highlights to touch it up it literally gets right to a level 9 10 it lifts like that. So Rec and Shades EQ go well colorants. They're great. Demi permanents are great when it comes to, you know, toning colors on your clients because let me tell you, it's not worth the headache with a permanent. The only time, write it in your book, write it in your notes. Permanent color is only okay if it's great coverage and it's a level of their natural or one level darker. So if I was going to do great coverage on myself, I'm a 4NN. I would either do a 3NN or a 4NN. Another thing, keep in mind when you're doing great coverage that some people are very resistant. My family is horribly resistant. So I knew I always had to use a double end, but not everybody does. And also keep in mind, if you are using a double end gray coverage pigmented color, that it's going to look a level or two darker. So if you're using a 4NN on Top Chic, it's going to look like a 3NN. So keep that in mind. A good example is my client Catherine. I just did a back to basics video with her a couple of days ago or a couple weeks ago, and I posted it two videos ago, and I'll link that on the card as well. She literally looks like a level three, but it's a four because it's a double pigment. Keep all this stuff in mind and the double pigment the harder it is to get out one thing I will say when you're doing great coverage and you're doing their roots specifically try not to overlap and stay exactly on that root because one thing about it is that if you're gonna lighten it up later on for some reason gray hair when you lighten it and it had permanent color on it it always lightens a little bit better than a regular natural colored hair that is covered with permanent I don't know what the science is behind that maybe because the hair didn't really have pigment when you did it but as long as you're not overlapping it will be a little easier to lighten up in the future. I hope you guys learned something here today a little bit more in depth about the difference between a semi, a demi, and a permanent hair color. Let me know down below what videos you guys want to see. I want to give more videos like this. I want to give you guys knowledge. I want to answer questions you have. I want to make you a better hairdresser. And if you're a client, thanks for watching. I know a lot of people tell me in messages all the time that they just get really relaxed by watching my hair videos. They're not a hairdresser, but I've taught them a lot of stuff and I love seeing comments like that. Don't be scared to leave a comment down below and like and share this video with anybody you think who will find it interesting and you know knowledgeable i love you guys so much let's get the numbers up let's start growing 2022 i'm coming hard and i'm gonna grow this channel as well as my personal youtube channel that i started last january i wasn't really giving it 150 percent this year but i'm going to for the new year so if you want to check out that personal behind the scenes of my life vlog type kind of thing with different ideas and different videos i put out definitely check the link down below that is my i am brett Ryan. YouTube channel that is personal. All right, guys, I love you so much. I'll see you in the next one. As always, so long for now, guys. Mwah.